Aloha. Greetings, everybody. Uh, it's another fine sunny morning here in Puna. Yep. Heading into week number three with no rain. So for all you folks who thought it never stopped raining over here, guess what? It is. Well, today I'd like to talk about that darn strawberry guava. Yeah. Cytium catlianum and catlianum litterali, the, the, the lemon and the, uh, the yellow uh, and the red strawberry guavas. <sighs> Hawaii has many, many, many invasive species. And I, after we're done talking about guavas, I would like to move into invasive species here and discuss that a little bit. But first, the guava. The guava is one of the worst okay yeah it, it really doesn't get much worse than than strawberry guavas here in hawaii um someone mm, we don't know who brought them here in 1825 at least if somebody knows who did that they aren't talking uh yeah they were brought here originally you know as a food plant um I, so generally speaking it's the uh, uh portuguese that have a fondness for this. The the guava is native to Brazil. Yeah. Okay, to begin with, the guava is the primary host for the oriental fruit fly, who is a terrible problem around here. Yeah, you bite into your fruit and the maggots crawling around in there. Yeah, his one heck of a good lot of reasons why you don't really want the strawberry guava hanging around your property um you know it, it draws pigs it draws rats um the birds will spread the seed everywhere um and i haven't seen documents to this effect but my observations are that that plant has an allopathic relationship with other plants. There's very little of anything that will grow around and in between the strawberry guava. Now, one of the reasons is that they get so tight, it's like a bamboo forest. There's no room in there. But I, I, at a distance, you know, 20, 30 feet out from stands of guava, I've seen things like uh, Hawaiian koa just expire whereas away from the guava they do not they will grow but they expire when they're near the guava and so my guess is they secrete something so there's another real good reason why you do not want that plant around some time ago i had been watching guava across the street from me slowly deteriorate yeah, previously I had actually, on occasions, uh, walked across with a chainsaw or something and, and trimmed them back because they would ruin my view of the ocean and of Kilauea's southeastern rift. I have an excellent view from here if the guavas don't try to steal it from me. Uh, well, you know, they'd always pretty much come back fat and happy eventually, but since they aren't on my property, I wasn't about to try to do any kind of killing i just shortened them a little <laughs> well lately i noticed that they were deteriorating yeah the guavas didn't look good at all and some of them the one over there that i've tortured for a few years it looks like it's probably stock dead initially i wondered if the wild pigs who had denned up all around those guavas uh, maybe were transferring the fungus that the rod the uh, rapid ohia death fungus into the roots of the guavas because they're both murders okay uh, I had a guy over here, though, who was working with the forestry department in the college one day shopping, and he says, oh, no, you know, they released that parasitic scale some years back on the guavas. I said, oh, see, I had, the last I had heard, this thing was a, a war with the pig farmers. They did not want the guavas reduced here on the island because their pigs eat guavas. Well, um, uh, I don't know how the county finally squared with them or the government squared with them but uh, apparently uh, it was uh, oh back in uh, 2011 they were they released uh, tectococcus ovatus that's a parasitic scale from brazil 
Uh, USDA spent 15 years testing this stuff to see if it would get into any of the native plants, and they apparently think it won't. It doesn't, hasn't in 15 years. Um, now we have a similar looking thing on, uh, um, oh, he is, there's a native insect that damages ohia foliage and looks very similar to what this Brazilian scale does to the strawberry guavas. Um, here is a picture of what this looks like on guava leaves. I want you to watch for it in your gardens. When you see guavas that have this, you're probably best if you just let them be you know let the insect breed let it multiply and let them spread because uh, they apparently have spread in here good they haven't gotten to the back of the property up there the neighbors got oh guava so lush so thick so ugly uh, i hate them things uh and no disease no insects on them at all and i see some over here by the creek that look as happy as you can imagine on the other hand across the street in the fields over here all of the guavas are starting to look wretched yeah they look really bad um there was a time when the guava was so thick i could not see um kilauea's southeastern rift well i could see where you know leolani estates was and fisher number eight had been but now I can actually see all the way down the rift, all the way out to Pahoiki from my front porch because the guavas have gotten so thin and scrawny, bare bone looking that I'm looking right through them like they're not there. Uh, and that's because of this parasitic scale. Uh, the Tectacococcus ovatus. <laughs> Oh, it also appears that uh, guava forests lose 27% more water here in the islands than native forest lands do. Um, that either could be because of runoff, because they don't develop the duff underneath, or because they don't uh, respirate as well. I I'm not sure what the reason for that is, but we will get less rain here by 27% or less water retention, sorry, by 27%. Uh, is, which is something we need so there you go that's the guava uh, I encourage you to look around your property take a look it'll be like little red bumps little red icicles sometimes they're not red but distortions on the foliage of the strawberry guavas look for it and you if you got it as good as I do across the street over here your guavas are going to be looking wretched uh, as far as the government is concerned they claim this thing will not kill the guava which is really too bad um, it just will stop it from flowering and fruiting because it'll reduce its health so it can't be as abundant as invasive okay so i know i can hear it already yeah, and <laughs> people out there going every time the government releases one thing to fix another and oh, blah 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 yeah you know uh, yeah and you know and you're right a lot of times too yeah u.s government has created some real big problems over the years not only here but in the mainland you know they've brought kudzu vine into the deep south to help rehabilitate burned out cotton fields boy was that a mess you know they they brought the mongoose here and the cane toad yeah the cane toad came here and the mongoose both during the sugar cane days you know they brought the cane toad around to eat a particular beetle uh that was in the roots of the cane but that did not work out very well and lucky for us the toad does not breed very well here because it needs standing water and we have very little standing water in hawaii uh, so there are some around though and if anybody making fish ponds in the yard you make them at ground level baby you better be expecting to hear in mass all night long as they breed in your pool yeah I, all my pools are lifted it's too high for the toads to get in so they can't go in there to breed uh, and so that mongoose that was brought here for rats and well the rats were nocturnal and the mongoose is diurnal and so it just ate all the native bird eggs you know that worked out real well too so you know hawaii has a history of some disastrous releases of one biological entity to help control and contain another biological entity 
you know. And so it hasn't always been good. No, it hasn't been. But bear one thing in mind first before you start to go off the handle on all of this. We've gotten smarter. Uh, we haven't gotten smart, but we've gotten smarter uh, about these things. Most of the releases these days tend to be in very small organisms and or microbes, you know. Uh, me, I'm personally very much in favor of hoping that they would begin to release uh, the genetically engineered 80s mosquito over here. Um, the, they're uh, sterile males to get rid of that darn thing. I'm tired of getting bit. But... We never had them here, so ask me if I care if they all go away. But, yeah. So as I said, we've been a little more careful, but guess what? Because <laughs> people don't like it when the government does this kind of stuff. They're kind of quiet about it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I never realized it, uh, until I saw it for myself that the scale on the Guavas was actually here and working. Um, since 1975, the USDA has released 51 biocontrol agents here in Hawaii. How's that one? Yeah, you guys want something to get up in arms about? You didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them have been fairly effective. Some have been pretty worthless. I, I, so far, uh, I don't know that any of them have become a serious problem. Uh, they were released here to help control Coster's Curse, which is an awful tropical weed. Um, it's still around, so I don't know. They were released to control the banana passion vine, uh, which is a terrible weed at high elevation. Since I don't live that high up the mountain here, I don't have my eyes on it, and I don't know how that's been working either. There was something called the ivy gourd that they've released biological entities uh, to control. Uh, there's the willy willy wasp. Uh, we have a willy, native willy willy trees here, or erythrinas, coral trees, native coral trees. We used to have a lot of uh, invade, uh, uh, exotic coral trees. Coral trees were imported here. Mostly they were used uh, to, as windbreaks around farm fields. They grew tall and skinny. Well, they're all gone. The wasp that got here just wiped them out. There is no such thing as a windbreak of willy willies. But they did introduce a particular parasitic wasp um, that apparently is saving the native willy willies on the west side of the island here. Because I have noticed they're still there. That's the only place I ever see any, any erythrinas anymore. I know, there's a couple of them in the parkway over by McDonald's in Kao. There's some variety or another that's still there. The, the stinging nettle caterpillar, now that apparently was successful. Ellen was one of the early people to discover it when she got stung by one. Um, and that doesn't seem to be around at all. I wondered what happened to it. Well, apparently they released something that went after it, and that must have been pretty effective. Mm, of course, then, we have the number one invasive species on the island, the domestic house cat. Right, Gracie? Yeah. She's, yeah, I'm an invasive species. Ain't you, huh, girl? Yeah, she invaded the house. Yeah. Number one cutest invasive species on the planet, right? So when it comes to invasive species, the only creatures, plants, whatever, that ever got to these islands before humans came, before the Polynesians, were all the most invasive species on Earth. This is a very, very distant location, one of the more remote island chains on the planet. It's never been connected to any other piece of land in all of time. So nothing has ever had the chance to jump ship and get here on these islands. It had to drift here on the wind. It had to float here on the seas, you know. It had to come here hooked on the back of a sea turtle or something on that order. Very difficult to get here. So the only things that ever made it here were the most invasive species on Earth. Strangely, once they arrived, they all started to 
toned down their game, lost their spines, got rid of their poisons, and then even became very selective about how they would m multiply and breed. Their habitats had to be very specific. Maybe they attached themselves to one particular pollinator and things like this until they became some pretty touchy stuff. Hawaii has uh, the largest number of endangered species on the face of the planet. <laughs> Because things here were, even though they started as terrible weeds and invasive things, they ended up becoming real wimps, man. They, yeah, they went totally aloha. Yeah, so uh, the story of Hawaii is invasive species. And we have brought more and more and more and more of them since people started traveling in boats and planes and everything else. They just keep coming uh, every day. There's a new one, really, is the truth. It's hard to keep them off. Unfortunately, I think most of them will either disappear or get aloha, you know. They're either going to become a lion or they'll leave eventually, but that process could take two million years or so. I won't be around to see it happen. <laughs> Hang loose.